Welcome to this video tutorial on Corona Render Engine's performance settings. In this tutorial, we will explore the various performance options available in the Corona Render Engine to help you optimize your rendering process. Let's dive in. To access the Corona Render Engine settings, open Cinema 4D and navigate to the settings. Once there, select the Corona Render Engine. Within the Corona Render Engine settings, locate the Performance tab. This is where we can fine-tune the performance settings for your renders. Let's take a closer look at each section. The first section is called Basic Configuration. It contains three important checkboxes. Lock Sampling Pattern. Enabling this option locks the noise pattern in place, ensuring consistency in still frames and animations. Disabling it allows for different noise patterns per frame which may be required by certain third-party denoising applications. Note that when using distributed rendering or a render farm service, the noise might vary from frame to frame regardless of this option. Conserve memory. When enabled, this option reduces memory consumption at the expense of rendering performance. It can decrease peak memory usage by up to 30%. Consider enabling this option if you encounter memory issues during rendering. Adaptive Light Solver. Enabling this option activates an improved method of rendering lights. The algorithm learns which scene lights are important in a given location and allocates more rays to those lights, resulting in reduced noise. This option can significantly speed up your renders. It's important to note that the adaptive light solver may sometimes produce brighter images. However, this difference in brightness should disappear over a longer render time. Additionally, results with the adaptive solver enabled are always more realistic and less biased than with the adaptive solver disabled. Moving on to the next section. Called Sampling Balance, it consists of two parts. GIAA Balance, this setting determines the number of global illumination samples per anti-aliasing sample. Higher values accelerate the cleanup of global illumination and light noise, while lower values improve the cleanup of anti-aliasing, motion blur, and depth of field noise. It's recommended to keep this value between 2 and 64. Light Samples Multiplier, this setting defines the number of direct lighting samples per GI sample. Increase this value in scenes with visible noise and direct lighting. The default value of 2.0 works well in most cases. Now let's explore the speed, accuracy balance section, which consists of two parts. Max sample intensity. This determines the maximum brightness of secondary GI samples. It's a trade-off between rendering performance and physical accuracy. Lower values suppress noise but produce darker images with lower intensity of reflections and caustics. Higher values produce brighter reflections and caustics but also introduce more noise. The default value of 20 is suitable for most scenes. However, setting it to zero enables an unbiased mode, which may not clear noise in some scenes. Max Ray Depth This setting controls the maximum number of light bounces. Adjusting this value slightly can improve performance or accuracy. Nevertheless, Corona's default value provides a good balance and is recommended for most scenarios. Let's proceed to the Displacement section which offers two options. Screen size, when selected, displacement tessellation is performed adaptively in the screen space, providing efficiency gains. This option allows you to set the number of pixels each tessellated triangle spans in the image. Lower values improve displacement quality, but consume more memory and per processing time. World size, when selected, displacement tessellation is performed absolutely in the world space. This method is generally less efficient but useful in specific cases to prevent popping artifacts in animations. Here, you can set the maximum length of each tessellated triangle in world units. Beware of extremely low values combined with large objects, as it may lead to memory issues and crashes. Moving on to the interactive rendering section, we have four options. Max passes. This option limits the maximum number of passes rendered in the interactive rendering mode. Setting it to zero ensures that new or changed regions will render, even if the maximum passes have already been reached. Force Path Tracing Enabling this option ensures that path tracing is always used as the primary and secondary solver in interactive rendering, regardless of the regular rendering settings. This helps keep the interactive rendering responsive by avoiding the pre-computation cost of UHD cache. Enable Motion Blur When enabled, this option allows the computation of motion blur in the interactive rendering mode. Fast preview denoise during render. Enabling this option iteratively denoises the image during the render. It replaces the noisy preview with a progressively refined, noiseless image, giving you a quick estimate of the overall lighting in the scene. Lastly, we have the fast caustic solver section, which contains five parts. Enable, enabling this option generates physically correct caustics at the expense of rendering performance. 
Note that to render refractive caustics, you need to enable them in the Corona material settings. Caustics only in Caustics Pass. When enabled, caustics are rendered only in a special Caustics multi-pass. Disabling it allows caustics to appear in the Beauty Pass, Light Select, and other applicable multi-pass elements. Generate caustics from environment. Enabling this option allows the caustic solver to generate caustics from the scene's environment lighting. Please note that this option does not influence caustics generated by the sun. Enable caustics adaptivity. Enabling this option utilizes an improved method for caustics calculation, improving their quality and efficiency. Include, exclude. These options let you include or exclude specific objects from being affected by caustics. You can choose between applying caustics only on the defined objects or not applying caustics on the defined object. And that's it. We've covered the performance settings in the Corona Render Engine. Remember, understanding and tweaking these settings can significantly optimize your rendering process. Experiment with different values and find the right balance for your specific scenes. Thank you for watching, and happy rendering.